Okay, I'm live. Uh, how's everybody doing? This is uh, Wire Wednesday number 21. We're going to do something different again. We're going to do digital. Uh, just FYI, I am not an expert in any way. I, uh, I'm just getting started with the digital too. I'm a small lab and the doctors I work for uh, are just now transitioning to digital. So, so I only do about one to two digital models a month. Um, so I was going to show you my process for uh, prepping them and getting them over to the printers. I don't have my own printer yet. Don't have a need for it. I will in the future. I know I do. I, if you're going to be in this business for 10 or more years, um, you know, you're going to have to go digital. It's, it's inevitable. So um, what I'm going to do is show my process of um, prepping a digital model. So this is noticing that the basing a 3D model, the, the title I put free, but I put an asterisk beside it because I use a free service within my paid EZRX service. So that is um, the asterisk. The other part is Mesh Mixer, which I don't know if I'll get into that or not, uh, but we'll see. So let me share my screen with you and uh, I'm, I'm checking to make sure everything's going good. Um, there we go. Make sure my chat's turned on. I'm watching a, the stream upstairs. So make sure you can hear me okay. I'm using headphones, um, a different kind of headphones just to make it a simple process because uh, I'm just going to be doing this on my computer, uh, sharing my screen with you. So let me share my screen. Okay, so uh, like I said, I use EZRX for my uh, personal, my laboratory's lab software. And there's a few reasons I chose this. And, and one of them was the uh, ability to do 3D editing within my lab, my web browser. Uh, so I'm using Firefox right now. And the Firefox is uh, almost a requirement for 3D software that EZRX uses um, so that it but it, it was okay because Firefox came out with an update they're just as fast as they ever were so let me um, I made a fake patient here uh, but I, I'm using a real case so this is a real case it got from a doctor uh, I just copied over the design that they wrote uh, and, and I uploaded the actual cases down here so as you can see, uh, I uploaded two originals, and EZRX went ahead and optimized them, meaning they uh, smoothed them, they closed any holes, uh, that kind of thing. They do that automatically. So this optimized one is what you want to use. Let me back up a little bit. So uh, if you're curious about EZRX, there's plenty of videos out there showing how it works and all that stuff. Um, here's the lab pricing. Uh, just to become a connected lab is, is $0, meaning you can receive EZRX prescriptions from doctors who are EZRX providers. This is not an endorsement of EZRX. This is, this is just what I use in my personal lab, and I thought I'd go through the process of showing how this is done. Oh, hello, Raccoon Lufa88. How are you doing? Um, but I, I don't know. This is only U.S. I don't know if it's international or not. So you international guys and gals, I don't know about this. You just have to check it for yourself. But the connected is you get, you know, you can receive free prescriptions and you get 25 gigabytes of storage, meaning they can, when you get a prescription from a doctor, it'll look like this and you'll see this and you can download it. That's what this little button is here. You can download it. And then you have your, so this is when I download it. And if you're using a Mac, you may not know this, but preview will actually show, actually you may not see this. I'm not sharing my full screen. So this is the download. You can download it and use your favorite software. Again, I'm, I'm using a I'm cheap, so that's one reason I chose EZRX. Um, 
when you bump up to the standard pricing, that means you can now create prescriptions. You can create to up to a hundred. Um, if you, it's a dollar twenty nine. If you go over a hundred, and you get the EasyRx three D edit software, uh, so you can actually edit it on the fly in your having to download it and put it into a uh, software. So this one's a little different because these green dots recommend rec uh, are asking for reset teeth. So let me just go ahead and get into it. Let's start with the upper. So if you click on it, uh, it brings up the file and you can either view it or edit it. So view it is what you get with the free account. Edit is now the upgraded account. So we'll give that a little bit of time to load. Um, let me see if I can. While this is loading, let's stop sharing. Okay, so I'm back. I'm going to try to reshare my screen, but differently. Okay, your entire screen. Yes. Okay, so hopefully y'all can see that. So this is what it starts out as. Um, it I am right now. I'm using my right click my mouse, and it's very good if you use a external mouse. I'm doing this on my laptop, but I have a mouse plugged into it. So there's my right click. So you can move it around. This is a little bit different than your uh, what software you might be using. And again, this is not for, for you guys and gals that are doing this every single day. This video is probably not for you. In fact, I need to watch videos from y'all to get tips from you. So um, this is just how I do it. And again, remember, I'm in a web browser, so, so all this is happening on their servers. So it kind of depends on your uh, your internet speed. So this, I'm doing left click, so this will rotate it around. Uh, you also have these buttons here. So top, bottom, left, and right. So you can top left top bottom front and back so and you have directions so you can move it up and down you can zoom in real real close uh you can zoom out zoom in but uh i this mouse i have has a scroll wheel so i'm using that to move it around well that is messed up that messes up my eyes so just let me show how you can tell this is a little bit of a mess up they told me uh, that it was a little mess up uh i, I don't know how they did that but uh, we're going to see if we can get around that okay so you just got to work your way down this list so let me collapse all this so you can see first thing you do is orient the model orient the orientate i guess so so it's real simple. Click the left molar. Click between the first interiors. And click the right molar. All right. So that's over. So just work your way down to trim. Oh, it's still completing. All right. So trim model. Now you can see it's already done a trim path. And you can actually just drag these like this. which it could be fine for some people, uh, but I'm a little impatient. So if you click on this easy trim model and hold down your alt key on your keyboard. So I'm gonna push my alt key and then I'm just gonna draw where I want this line. Now this, this part's gonna be tricky and it's gonna take a little bit of time to uh, work my way around it. But as you can see, it's going to take a, little a, a couple tries to get this just right. I like having a full palette since I'm doing a spring retainer on it. So when you get close to the starting point, it's going to turn green for a second. Uh, and then it'll turn back to uh, this mustard yellow uh, for your trim path. So I can tell I'm going to have a few problems with this, but we'll see. So let's trim model. 
it's this next button down here. And it will tell you if it's, say, oops, we weren't able to add a base to the model. As most commonly caused by imperfections in the model, we have changed the trim path to red where there's an issue. So you can see there's an issue right here. So what I tend to do is I just drag these uh, dots around and you can actually look inside and you see there is a hidden dot in there. And so that's um, one of the problems is there's a hidden dot. So I'm gonna drag that to the front side here. There we go. So let's try this again. Trim model. Oh, did it again. So now let's move further down. I like to keep and make sure there's no red dots anywhere else. So let's try a trim model again. Move this around. Oops. There we go. Just moving this. Probably a bad one to start with, huh? There we go. All right, so cut off part of that. Uh, I don't need all of that. Left a little, I can cut that off. This does have a plane position, cutting plane. So you can do that. And I believe you just, I don't like it on here. It does a really a weird plane position. It works sometimes, sometimes it doesn't. All right, so remove cutting plane. Uh, I'm just going to fix that in the other editor. Since I have to reset these teeth anyway, the good thing is I don't. they didn't ask me to reset this tooth. I'm just resetting these central ones. All right, so we've trimmed the model. So now we're going to add a base. This is my favorite part. So I, I like to do hollow, depending on your printer, what you like to do. Base height, the thinnest. You can do also do custom base, base height, but there's two millimeters for, you know, you get the point. Wall thickness, 2.5. You can add drain holes if, depending on the printer you're going to use. Uh, what this is going to be printed, I'm sending this to a um, 3D printing service in uh, next town over, and they have a um, Vita, uh, sorry, Envision Tech Vita printer. So they like to have drain holes in there. So I'm just going to add a base. Now remember, this is all done on the server. I'm, it's having a little bit of time because I'm actually live streaming this, so I'm using up some of the internet. Um, so it actually goes a little bit faster. So there is the based model. And again, you can cut that off if you want. I'm going to cut it off and since I'm going to be using another software, otherwise I'd try to get rid of that. Um, so that's pretty much it. Here's the hollow on the inside. There's the drain holes. Um, so let's put a name on here. Again, this is my fake patient, Johnny Appleseed. So I like to engrave these so nothing is sticking out <laughs> compared to this thing that's sticking out. So I'm going to position the first label. And you just you read from left to right. So you click on the left, click on the right. It puts the name in there. You can adjust these things how you see fit. And then add label. Carving label into model, position, polishing it up. And we are good. So there is Johnny Appleseed's name in the model. So now you can save model. And I just use their default hollow. So when I, uh, now this EZRX has a share with colleague feature. So you can actually just email this script with the models attached to it to your 3D printer who has a free EZRX account. And I just tell them print the models that have the word hollow in them. And that's, 
been, they don't have a, any kind of problem with it at all. So let's see. Um, hopefully y'all can see this. It looks like my stream's not going to be very good. Um, I might have to do a off live stream to do this. Okay, so that one is done. So we can go back to the original script up here. And now we're going to click on the lower and we're going to edit it. So we're going to do the same thing again. So it's pulling it in again. It's always a little bit quicker. I'm live streaming this. So that's why we're having a little bit of issues with it. Uh, if you're just now joining the live stream, I am no expert at this. And I, this is mainly just for those small labs or just getting start, started in this like we are. If you have any tips or helpful hints, put them in the comments below. Okay, so we got a lot of artifacts in here. So we're going to try to trim this to get rid of some of these little uh, fins and flare ups and stuff. Uh, but first, we need to orient the model. So we're going to click on left molar. We're going to click in between the two centrals, first interiors, and the right molar. So that will orientate the model. So the um, software knows what's up is up and what's down is down. So we are going to try to, again, I'm using my left click to move this around. Let's start over here. I'm going to zoom in a bit. All right. We are going to use easy trim model. and I'm going to hold down my alt key. I'm going to try to get in here. I am probably going to come back and adjust a lot of these, but uh, doing it this way will definitely have a lot less adjusting. I'm trying to get down in there. If I had drugged this over this side of the, these fins, it was going to try to include those in the model. I don't want that. Right. Oops. See, I touched that thing. Oh, well, it's another thing. Ooh. Wow. Yeah, it looks like I'm going to have to adjust these. See if I let up on the Alt key, I can move it around, get the right angle, push back down on the Alt key, and it continues the line. Now I'm going to get close. It's going to turn green. There we go. It means it's connected it. So I'm going to go back through here and adjust these. I've got to give enough room for my acrylic down here. Now I can already tell this is going to throw some red dots at me. So I'm prepared to, I'm going to try to guess which of these dots might be a problem. And there we go. These dots are probably a problem. I like to keep the gum line on my 3D prints. That's just, I know some people will cut it off because you don't really need it. But uh, remember, I'm doing a labial bow, so my you got to think I'm going to be bending a labial bow across here, and my loop is going to be dipping down here. So I need enough of this to help with that. Oh, see, I'm. Did you see what I did there? Let me see if I can get to. I tried to pull this down. It's trying to pull it on the outside of that fin. So I'll just pull it back on the inside. So don't, it's okay if you, make sure you, you move it around, try to get the best angle. So you can see, I'll move this to the top and then move this around the corner. Oh, see that one's, was trying to be on the wrong side. Okay. I'll try to get as much as this is possible. All right, let's cross our fingers and trim up. Oh, there we go. Those dots are up there. I knew that was going to be a problem. Trying to get those to where I can see those lines. Move this around some. I think what happens is these this little 
orange line you see here, it uh, a bulk of it's on the inside, and I think it really throws off the trim path. Again, I am not an expert at this by any means, so trim up. Oh, that worked. Cool. So I like that. So here's the trim model. We took off all those artifacts, those fins and stuff. So then we just move right on. So you see how easy this is. Um, I do hollow, uh, base height the thinnest, and um, let me collapse some of these menus here. So I can get to wall thickness two and a half, add drain holes, and add base. So that was one thing I really liked about. I had decided to use EasyRx before they came out with this, but then they started coming out with this. I was like, oh, that is even better. Um, so for all of us beginners that are doing this, here is the base on it, as thin as possible. So I should have enough room for acrylic. And I'm going to duplicate these anyway, um, just because I don't get me very many of them, so I have time to duplicate them. Uh, anyway, let's. So let me go over the add a name label. So you can do the patient RX number, which is this. Uh, if you want to keep the patient's name off of it, again, I, I've created a fake name, so I'm not worried about it. The bin number, uh, the patient's initials, the practice name. You could put all these on here. You got two labels to choose from. So um, let's see if we can do this. Not much. Let's uh, do bottom. Let's flip this around. There we go. So you can use these little buttons up here to help orientate your model. So let's put the name right here. Let's get this in front of us. So I'm going to engrave this one. I'm going to put position first label and click here and click here. Johnny Appleseed. It's actually falling off a little bit of the model. And add label. So let's go to the other side here. And let's put this position in second. Let's do custom text of spring aligner. So you can, uh, let's do, let's emboss this one. Oh, I can't do it. It it does both labels. So let's position the second label and here and here. Now let me show you something. Let me undo add label. See how I went left to right. Now let watch what happens if I go right to left. Oops, position second label. Boom and boom. Spring aligner. Oh, my first label, I didn't save it. Uh, so you see how it's upside down. So let me undo label. Position second label, I'll go left to right. Spring aligner. And let's do the position first label, which is uh, the patient name here and here. Oh, I did practice name, not patient name. Oopsie. So let's undo that. Patient name. Oh, it did. <laughs> well, we're learning together. <laughs> undo ad label. Okay. Let's keep it simple. But you can see the, the options. All right, so let's do the other side. Let's let's try this again. Let's do um, spring and position second label and add labels. So there we go. So there's the name, and there's what whatever custom text you can put the color, whatever you want to do and then save model. So, and actually probably do lower. Okay. 
So please don't navigate navigate off this page or close the tab until the save is complete. Otherwise, the file save will be incomplete. So as that is going, um, that was it as far as the EZRX part. Uh, now, there's a part I will show you what I use, and I use Mesh Mixer. And I want to thank Dr. Baron Gruder. Uh, he's put on some, uh, I think I have a card that should be popping up soon um, around here, especially if you're watching the, the stream, the recording of this. So look up Baron Gruder. He has lots of videos on this where he's using this free software stuff to edit files and, and things like that. So he has one where he does minor tooth alignments, and that's the one I watch. Um, and actually, I think I have it. Let me share my screen again. Okay, so here's the lab, the title, Mesh Mixer, How to Make Minor Tooth Alignments, and it's Baron Gruder. DDS. So big shout out. Thanks to Dr. Gruder for putting these out. Um, okay, so that's saved. Um, I can close this out now. Go back to the original script. I'm going to refresh it and you're going to see two more that have popped in here. So what I will do is then share with colleague and I can put in the recipient's email here and it will share just this URL. This just this screen uh, with all these files. And I'll say in the comments below, hey, pr please print both models that say the word hollow in them, or you, you know, you can rename them whatever you like. So let's, um, let's do this lower one. I'm gonna download it and open it up in Mesh Mixer. So I click that to download it. I'm gonna open Mesh Mixer now and I'm going to import from downloads. There's Johnny Appleseed's lower. And the cool thing about Apple's, and I think all computers do this now, is you can actually preview it, make sure it's the right one, and then open. So this way, since I've previously edited this in EasyRx and I've close the model so to speak even though it's hollow it's closed it's not an open scan anymore um i don't have to worry about um going through the steps that he that dr gruder does in closing the model so it's already closed but you could do analysis here if you click here and inspector and then you can you know repair all and it doesn't take long um so that's good and i think uh EasyRx is actually, this is actually smoother than it used to be. This used to be really rough, but they've actually fixed it. So let's, uh, let's go to select and, ooh, that is big. Let's do 25 or so. I'm going to zoom in. So the controls are just a little bit different. Now I'm going to reset this tooth and this tooth, but let's just, ooh, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> so right click is the one that moves it around if you click your scroll wheel that will move it this way and then of course your front click is your select tool so you need to click select or I believe you can hit S on your keyboard and you get it so you're just going to I'm just going to fill in this tooth and just trying to get it around the gum line. Now, if you accidentally spill over like that, if you hold down the shift key, you can clean that up and your left click button. So you can actually, and then be sure to move it around to get all angles. Now, let's get that, this, there we go. And you just zoom in. You see, I missed a spot there. So you're just pretty much saying, I want all the tooth surfaces. I don't know what I did there. 
double clicked it or something. So I just did a uh, control Z to undo. There we go. So you can be just as particular as you want. Now this, when you approve this selection or go to deform it, uh, which is the next step for resetting the tooth, um, you're going to, uh, there's going to be a little bit of a spillover so that it can blend the two surfaces together so it's not so much of a um, jagged edge when you go to reset. And you're just, according to this, you know, this is not dental software. This is made by Autodesk. It's a free download. Um, and shift and clean this up. So it doesn't really know what a tooth is. Um, but you're just saying to it, here are all the triangles that I want you to attach all together as one unit and give me controls to um, do that. So I think I have this tooth where I want it. I don't think I want so much of this showing. So notice I, oopsie, too much. So you can actually change your brush size to smaller, see how small that is now. Get a swig of water. Okay. So now you go up to deform, soft transform. Now you see how much spillover or fall over, fall off there is? Now it's going to, if I do this, see it's going to take all that tooth with it. So if I rotate, see how it rotates. So I'm going to do control Z to reset all that. Get back to normal. So I'm, what Brian Gru, uh, Baron Gru, uh, Dr. Gruder, he does 0.75, which seems to be a good spillover. Now it's going to grab this a little bit. Um, so let me do that, make it a little bit smaller. Okay, so you have these controls here. Sometimes I like to use this world view. Um, sometimes I'll use the L view. It, whatever works best for you. It, um, so I, I really want to rotate this. So let me look at the occlusal view. And you're going to grab this bar here, and you're just going to rotate it. All right. So now I want to go forward. I want to move this ever so slightly forward, rotate it. I know that looks off, but the pixels were off. Let's look at it this way. And then you can rotate it. Come out this way just a little bit. Okay. Now, depending on which, see how that changes with your orientation? So now if I want it to tuck, if I need to tip it out or in, you could do that. So I'm going to undo. I think that might be the best we can do. There we go. That's the triangle that I want it. Now, this is a little artifact from... Um, me select, I select it too much, so I got a piece of that tooth. So I could actually cancel. Um, I could go back and deselect. I'm going to do shift and take away some of these pixels. So that is not so much. There we go. I'm just take away this pixel or triangle. Okay, so let's deform, soft transform. If, again, it defaults to this big fallout number, so I'm going to do fall off number. So I'm going to do that. Actually, I'm going to do 60. If you do too little, you're, it's going to be very sharp lines. So let's try 0.5. All right, so let's, I'm going to rotate this first. There we go. I like that a lot better. And then we're going to take the whole thing, move it forward. And let's look at the, so now it's sort of in line here. You can make some final adjustments.
that canine part needs to be kicked out just a tad, but they didn't ask me to. Because my, this tooth and this tooth. So let's accept that and let's just move on to the next. You can actually go back and smooth that little point off. Um, or when I duplicate it, I can just do it with my knife <laughs> real quick. <laughs> I'm a little old school. Uh, so let's uh, select again. Let me go back up, get a bigger selection here. And we're going to do the gum line all the way up to the incisal edge. So you're just pretty much coloring in the whole tooth here. Uh, something happened. Oh, there we go. I'm going to make this just a tad smaller so I can get down into this gum line here. Now, the paid softwares do this a lot better. Um, but, uh, you know, until I get a lot more of these coming in, I don't feel like spending thousands of dollars for that software. Um, and there's probably some other ones out there, so be sure and put it in the comments below. You know, what what software do you use? Um, How is it working for you? And there are plenty of these videos. I am not the first by any means to do this. Just thought some people might be curious. It might be in the same boat I am. You're getting a couple a month, but you don't want to spend the money. Now, you can use Mesh, mesh Mixer to do what you did, what I did in EasyRx. And Dr. Gruder has an example of that, but I just find it easier to do EasyRx, and I'm already paying for EasyRx, so that's why I like to use that. So I think I got this where I like it. In a weird spot here. And remember, I'm using shift key to remove any spots I don't want. So yeah, oh, I need to fill that in. That's part of the tooth. There we go. So let's go deform, smooth. Well, you know what? Let me get this in the right orientation. Maybe that would help. Soft transform. Again, this is too much. So let's do point 0.70. I feel like that's too much. Let's do 0.50. Okay, let's try that. So I'm just going to try to push this tooth straight out by taking this little triangle and pushing it out like that. So I'm going to tip it out just a tad. Feel like it can go out just a little bit more and slightly rotate. And we'll accept that, see what that looks like. You can see how much I pushed it in. So you can tell I'm going to have to wax this a little bit um, before I bend the wires. Now, one thing I didn't do was duplicate this. Um, inspector repair all. It looks like there's a little bit of an open gap there. Okay, so that's um, resetting teeth. Just a basic. Definitely watch his video. You'll get a lot more tips than I can do. But you can you can tell. I, I still feel like I need to transform this. Uh, but let me show one more thing. Um, I'm not going to save this because that was terrible. Uh, I'm going to do the upper. Uh, let's download the upper one. Save. And then I'm going to go to Mesh Mixer. I'm doing this on Apple. They have Mesh Mixer for, um, uh, let's see, Johnny Appleseed. Yeah, there's the upper. Okay, open. Uh, they have it for Windows and Mac. So here is this thing. So let's let me reset this tooth real quick. But first, I'm going to do is um, let's go edit, and we're going to duplicate. So now I just made two of them, um, and you could 
rename this one, you know, uh, whatever the patient name is, original. And then the next one, to rename it, uh, you know, whatever the patient is, blind. Now, if you open this up, let's enter that in. We'll remove that. So right now you can't tell the difference between the two. So we're looking at the aligned one. That's the one we're going to make edits on. And then we can go back later and see what kind of edits we made. So I'm going to go to select. Let me drop this down. We're going to do the same thing here. I'm going to kind of do this a little bit quickly. And now we're running out of time. And those people that do this all day, every day are probably rolling their eyes at me right now going, you're doing it all wrong, Kate. Uh, that's fine. Everybody start somewhere. There we go. Let's follow the gum line. I'm going to be moving this thing. Let's see, let me make this a little bit bigger. Oh, geez, Kate. So shift, a little spastic clicking there. All right, let me make this small again. Let me clean this up. Oh, there's a little spot there. That's weird. Now let me clean this up. It kind of reminds me of painting nails. Not that I do it, but it just kind of reminds me of, you know, trying not to get it, get it only on the nail bed. I think I see a little spot here. There we go. Oh, a whole huge spot. So yeah, make sure you rotate the model around so that you can see everything. Um, ah. Chat. Okay. Clean that up just a tad. Okay, so now we're going to deform and do soft transform. And again, the fall off. It just, I don't know what it's trying to do, 0. 0.75. There we go. That actually looks bad. not bad. All right, so we're going to push this out. And then we're going to rotate it. All right, this actually needs to be rotated, but they didn't give me instructions to do that, so maybe they're going to. So let me accept that. Now let me show you um, the view somewhere in here. Let's see, view, show objects browser, and then you can actually, you can see exactly how much I move that out. So you can go back and forth. So there's the original. And then there's the new one. So you can see the before and after. So that's it. Um, I'm not going to save that either. Uh, so that's it. Hope that helps. Uh, again, I should rename this newbie tries to edit a 3D model because I still feel new at it. And I know there are some amazing videos out there. So... Hopefully some will pop up as suggested uh, after you watch this. Again, check out Brian Baron Gruder's, Dr. Gruder's page. He's got lots of these videos and he's very knowledgeable in what he does. <clears throat> and so be sure and, and watch that. Thank you for uh, paying attention and sticking in there this long. Hopefully you're, you're having a good Wednesday. Other than that, I'm going to sign off. Happy bending.